Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be doing a product and brand focused film for you. And I'm going to be focusing on the very recently released Fenty Beauty by Rihanna. When I first saw the campaign for Fenty Beauty, I was so surprised. I thought it was very out of the blue. I didn't expect Rihanna to come out with a makeup range. Within the campaign, I thought the models and the way it looked and the way it was filmed, it was all very refined. So it very much appealed to me. And when I checked out the actual products and had to look at them all, I thought, my goodness, these are fantastic. I'm going to go and try these out. And I know it's very popular at the moment and I do very much try to avoid trends. As I always say, I believe trends are designed for the anxious. However, Fenty Beauty have launched 40 shades of foundation. They've launched a foundation in 40 shades. And I have purchased the lightest shade as well as a highlighter. And we're going to see how they get on. What I very much liked about this range and certainly when I heard Rihanna speak about the products, is that when she was speaking about the sorts of shades that they created, especially for the darker skin tones, she was very much speaking about the different tones, the different colors, the differences between skin tones. And of course, skin tones vary from light to dark, but within that palette, you also have different shades. And when I heard Rihanna speak about these many different shades, it very much seemed to me as if though there was a school of thought that was about refinement as opposed to one beauty standard. So that very much appealed to me. So Fendi Beauty, of course, launched around the world, it launched here in the United Kingdom, launching in Harvey Nichols, which is a department store here in the United Kingdom, for those of you that are unaware. So I trotted along to Harvey Nichols and purchased two products from the Fendi Beauty range. Here I have the Pro Filter Foundation. This is the taller one in the shade 100. And this is a matchstick in the shade Confetti, which is this beautiful iridescent blue highlighter that I'm going to try out. Now, I was very surprised when I saw that Rihanna had launched a makeup range. I have long appreciated Rihanna's contribution to music and to art and to the world for some time. I very much remember the day that I first heard one of her songs a very long time ago, and I was very young when I heard it. I've always had a great appreciation for her work, and I have many of her records within my archive. So trying out this makeup line is definitely very exciting and of course a little unexpected. When I went into Harvey Nichols, I saw all the foundation shades lined up and there's 40 of them from very dark to very light. And my main interest today is in the very lightest shade and we're going to see how light it is and whether or not it is pale. Because I always see brands when they launch foundations that are aimed at the very palest of skin tones, they never really are that pale. So today we're going to trial it out and of course we shall compare it to other foundations to see whether or not it is applicable for the very fairest of skin tones. On first impressions, I actually quite like the packaging. It's quite chic. It's not expected. I didn't expect it. It's quite um, unusual and very refined. And this is the foundation, the Pro Filter Foundation by Fenty Beauty in the shade 100. And I very much like the packaging. It has a white cap and it's quite slick. It's almost cylinder-like with flatter sides. And I think it's really, really beautiful looking. It'll definitely look good on a counter and it'll look good within my kit, definitely. This is the first shade that I have bought. I might buy a couple more shades depending on what I'll be needing. And I have not tried out this foundation yet at all. So we're going to see today whether or not it is light enough for my skin tone and how the foundation settles. And when you take the lid off, it has a pump, which is fantastic. I've never really liked these foundations that you have to pour out onto your hand. It gets all messy. I'm going to be going in and applying that directly to my skin, just on top of freshly moisturized skin. And I've gone in today and applied my favorite moisturizer, which is the Embry Release Moisturizer, just to the skin quite liberally, as I am quite dry at the moment. And for eyebrows, I have gone in and applied some of Cryolan's Dermacolors Cream in the shade D40. And I just went in and applied several strokes of MAC Cosmetics eyeshadow in the shade Concrete. Now I've taken three pumps of that foundation and I'm just going to be taking that in on a Space NK foundation brush. I know that Fenty Beauty have also launched a primer and a foundation brush, but today I'm just going to be using the ones that I already have. And I'm just going to apply that directly to the skin. So far, I would say this is quite light actually. I was expecting it to be a little bit darker. I did try a little bit of it on my face when I was in the store and it was looking quite dark, but I went and found a window and examined it at the window where it looked quite, uh, quite matching actually. So we shall see if it's a match. Now it is definitely very pale. There's no doubt about that, but it's one of those shades that has quite a bit of color in it. 
And I wouldn't say it's a full texture formula. I think I probably have to apply two coats to get the sort of coverage that I like. But I quite like the feel of it so far. Other reviews that I've seen online about this foundation, it does apparently dry quite quickly. So I'm just going to apply it on the skin quite fast and then go in with a buffing brush. Now, I would definitely describe this foundation as having color in it. And what I mean by that is sometimes you get pale foundations that don't have a lot of pigment in them. So they might give you good coverage, but their actual shade is almost blank. It doesn't have a sort of a, a peachiness or a color to it or a yellowiness. They can be quite neutral. And even though I would say this is quite neutral, it does have quite a bit of color in it, which I think is actually a really good thing, provided that the foundation is light enough and of course, complementary to your undertones. It has a really nice smell, this foundation as well. It almost reminds me a tiny bit of Play-Doh, some of the stuff that we used to have when we were children, just a tiny faint scent of that. So it's very pleasant as it's bringing back some nostalgic memories. Now I'm very surprised by how pale this actually is. I'm a little shocked. I wasn't expecting it to match. I was expecting it to be too dark for my skin. And I'm now just going to stipple all of that into place with a Zova 102 silk finish brush. And I'm just stippling it. It's actually very easy to work with. I'm really, really very surprised. I think when you are very fair, you don't expect products to match or to work for your skin. I think the same can be said for the very darkest of skin tones. And I know that within the Fenty Beauty range, they have launched a very dark shade, very dark shades. So I hope many of you people that are very dark skinned are also able to find something there that is applicable for your skin tone. It's actually quite easy to blend. Now, I can definitely feel it setting. It is definitely a more matte foundation, but it's not a dead flat matte. Some foundations, they go totally matte and they look very unflattering on the skin. They can make the skin look like a prune. However, this one is actually quite almost demi-matte. That's how I'd say it feels, and I'm just feeling it lightly. Now, because I have buffed and stippled this on, it has thinned it down ever so slightly. So I'm going to go in with a second coat, but just as a first coat, I would say it's actually fantastic for every day. I think it's something that I will definitely be wearing every day. I actually just took a trip to the lavatory and the lighting there is of course different to that within my studio. And I was surprised, I was very surprised that it actually matches my skin tone right now. However, we will have to see whether or not it oxidizes, but I definitely could get away with this and I think it actually flatters my skin tone very, very well. Now I am going to go in and apply an additional layer just areas that I feel need additional coverage, certainly around my nose and the center of my face and of course my chin. It's actually quite easy to blend, even though I can definitely feel it setting and I definitely know that it's setting. I can see in areas where I've applied it, it sets quite quickly. So that has actually given me quite decent coverage. Of course, I will go in and apply concealer to areas like the under eye and pinpoint conceal a few little spots that I may have and of course, cut the concealer around my eyebrows. Of course, a big buffing brush like this, you can't really apply it too close to the eyebrows, otherwise my eyebrows will smudge. I would definitely consider the shade 100, a pale formulation that's suited for very pale skin tones like my own. I can certainly verify that. However, I think I would prefer it just a tiny, tiny bit lighter, but it's definitely matching me so far. I don't know how long it will take to oxidize or what the oxidization process will be like. This is the first time I've applied a full face of the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Foundation in the shade 100. But in terms of how light the shade is and whether or not it's suitable for the very fairest of skin tones, I can definitely say that it is not far off the Kat Von D Locket foundation in the shade Light Neutral. I would say it's actually a tiny bit darker than this one, but to give you a gauge of how light it is, it is definitely way lighter than the MAC Cosmetics Studio Fix in the shade NW10. It's certainly very near the Kat Von D Light 42 foundation, which is a tiny bit, tiny, tiny bit dark for me. But this is actually looking really good and um, I'm quite impressed and very surprised actually by how light it is. If you can match John McLean's skin tone, then you are definitely producing foundations for the very fairest of skin tones. I'm going to now go in and apply some concealer to the under eye 
and cover up any little blemishes and of course neaten up around the eyebrows. So I can definitely see having applied my concealer that it is oxidizing quite a bit. It is a little bit darker than uh, my actual skin tone, but actually only just a tiny bit. I would say the shade 100 from Fenty Beauty is actually very similar to Light 42 by Kat Von D and considerably lighter than MAC Cosmetics NW10. I can definitely get away with this and I definitely will be wearing it at a later date. Now my skin is actually quite dry, so I wouldn't powder this foundation. However, the concealer I used does need a little bit of powder. Now I wouldn't powder this foundation at all actually, it definitely dries matte. However, my concealer does not, so it must be set. So with that now applied and set through and concealer done, I'm now going to apply some of the matchstick shade Confetti. It is this lovely taupe cream packaging and you just take off the lid, that is the colour of it. And of course you just swivel it up and down depending on how much product you want at one time. Now these sticks are magnetised. I actually got a bit of a fright when I went to pick this one up. They were all sort of bunched together on the counter and when I went to pull this forward, I pulled it and all of the other shades came with it so I got the fright of my life. They're magnetic, which is fantastic. So if you have many of them, they will stay organized by sticking together. Now this confetti shade would be absolutely fantastic across the cheekbones or on any part of the face. But because I've gone in and set the foundation, if I were to go and apply it directly to the skin, it would disturb the foundation that I've applied and set through. So we're not going to do that. However, I'm going to apply a little bit of it to the eyelids and it's great to just blend in a little bit. It gives this beautiful blue sparkle. Very, very subtle actually, once you blend it down. But I'm going to apply this directly to my skin and I'm going to apply it along my neck and onto my shoulder so that you can see the true colour intensity of it. And certainly on paler skin tones, this shade looks fantastic. And then this is one trick for making your body glow stronger is by doing almost a circle on the shoulder. And once you blend that in, it looks incredible. I'm also going to take that across my collarbone and just along the top of the shoulder as well. So that shade by itself actually looks fantastic. And once you just blend it in slightly, you can do this with your hands or with a brush. On my sort of skin, it's absolutely beautiful for just lifting the skin up. I don't think you can really get away with applying very sort of goldeny warm highlighters to very, very fair skin. They really do have to be these lovely purpley blue shades. It just adds the most beautiful sheen to the skin. So when you turn in the light, it just captures the light and it reflects so beautifully. It's quite subtle once you blend it in. I'm very fond of these colours and I absolutely love confetti. My hand is now all purpley and sparkly. Another area that I really like to apply shimmer to is actually the hollow in the neck and just up the neck bones. As you can see, it just adds the most ethereal essence to my skin. This sort of colour looks absolutely great on everybody and certainly on very deep skin tones as well. Certainly on skin tones as fair as my own, it looks absolutely fantastic. Blending that in ever so slightly. I'm finding that I do have to build up quite a bit with this, so it would be great to apply just every day or build it up when you want to have more intensity. I like the versatility of the product. So it has definitely given my neck the most beautiful glow. I would describe the shade Confetti almost like being a very matte and textured cream, but very much similar to MAC Cosmetics Reflex Pink and Reflex Blue. It's almost like the two are combined together to make this beautiful, very purpley shade. So I further went in and applied some eyeshadow and some mascara, a little bit of lip liner and some contour to the cheeks, completing this look. To summarize my thoughts, the foundation has actually oxidized a little bit darker than my natural skin tone, a quite a bit darker. As you can see, there is a difference between the two, but it is not something that I can't work with. And I would say this shade is very similar to the Kat Von D Lock Foundation in the shade Light 42. They're very similar, and certainly once they have both dried down, they oxidize slightly. But this is a fantastic foundation. It is definitely one of the very pale formulas on the market. It actually feels really nice on the skin, quite light feeling once it's dried down. But with that aside, I can definitely confirm this is a formula suited for the very fairest of skin tones.
Summarising my thoughts on the matchstick in the shade Confetti, I absolutely love and adore this colour. I think it is absolutely gorgeous and it definitely flatters my fair skin tremendously. This is definitely going to be something I will use frequently, certainly on the body. This product is very much designed like a cream stick, however, not as emollient as the average either cream concealers or cream highlighters. It's got more of a drier formula, definitely a much drier formula and drier texture. So it will be very long wearing, very, very long wearing, and I absolutely adore it. And when I went to Harvey Nichols and was exploring the many products that they have launched at Fenty Beauty, I absolutely adored the powder highlighters. I didn't actually get any of them. I'm going to get them at a later date. I tried out Trophy Wife. It was beautiful. Gorgeous texture, very, very thin, very refined texture. A lot of the products are very refined in appearance, in texture, and in colour. That is definitely something I would say about the Fenty Beauty range. And so far I have very much enjoyed working with the products and exploring them. I think the packaging is great and I think overall the brand is very refined. It's very refining. There doesn't seem to be one sort of standard that they're selling. It's, I think the message that has been portrayed is very much about refinement, which is very appealing to me of course. I've spoken on my channel before about how important refinement is. So I must say I'm very excited to see what Fenty Beauty brings out next. I have been very excited by the brand so far and I definitely look forward to seeing what they bring out next, even though they have just launched. And I hope today's product and brand focus film has been useful for you, certainly for my viewers who do so indeed happen to have very fair skin like myself. I hope that by demonstrating and applying and trying out this foundation, it shall have given you some clearance when considering the brand and this shade. And as I said, I'm very excited to see what Fenty Beauty bring out next. I'd like to directly wish Rihanna and Fenty Beauty and all of the company the very best of luck. I think it's an incredible thing just to go and open up a brand out of nowhere. I'm all for entrepreneurs. I think it's a great thing to be able to start a company, to start something with an idea, with a vision, and to contribute to an economy. It's a great thing. I hope that you have found today's film either interesting, helpful, insightful, or useful. And once again, thank you very much for watching. And of course, Take care of yourself. Bye.